In dogs with a partial competent cruciate tear, the ligament will have damage that is not significant enough to warrant resection. The ligament may be left in these patients according to surgeon preference and judgment. In this anatomic specimen, this is a normal cranial cruciate ligament. The bands of the cranial cruciate ligament are seen wrapping around each other until they insert on the tibia. In this anatomic specimen, this is a normal cranial cruciate ligament. The bands of the cranial cruciate ligament are seen wrapping around each other until they insert on the tibia. We will resect this cranial cruciate ligament next to allow full evaluation of the intraarticular structures. A standard punch is preferred for this process. The standard punch is placed into the joint and the action of the punch is activated only when visualized. The punch is used to progressively resect the cranial cruciate ligament. It is important the caudal cruciate ligament is identified visually and protected during this process. Bands of the cranial cruciate ligament can be tensioned until the ligament is completely transected. If difficulty is found during this position, then the shaver can be replaced into the joint. The three millimeter dissector is being used in this way on an oscillating fashion to remove and open the cut ends of the cranial cruciate ligament to determine the completeness of transection. The residual band may here be visualized on the caudal aspect of this ligament. Once that has been performed successfully, the punch can be replaced into the joint if necessary to cut the remnants or the shaver may be used for this purpose. The insertion of the cranial cruciate ligament is being debrided at this stage. Directly caudal to that insertion is the cranial ligament of the lateral meniscus. This ligament should not be damaged during this process. To the left of the shaver blade is the medial tibial plateau. It also should be protected and well looked after. By placing the shaver up into the notch, the origin of the cranial cruciate ligament can be debrided. It is often helpful to place the four millimeter torpedo shaver at this stage. To maximize visualization in this area, the scope may be placed deeper into the joint and the post turned to look back into the notch. Use of the 30 degree offset is beneficial when trying to maneuver around the joint and assess intraarticular structures completely. It is not crucial to remove the remnant of the cranial cruciate origin completely, but rather clean the notch so that placement of a distraction lever is possible. It is important to identify the lateral meniscal ligament as it moves towards the femur. This will be sitting in the notch in the ventral aspect below the cranial cruciate ligament. By retracting the cranial cruciate ligament, we can visualize that ligament. It attaches to the lateral meniscus and runs in the caudal aspect of the joint, caudal to the caudal cruciate ligament. Further shaving using the three millimeter shaver may be attempted at this stage. If one is struggling with the shaver, use of the punch in order to resect the ligament stump may be beneficial. By breaking apart the ligament remnants, the shaver is more effective. It is very important when using the punch in this area to not damage either the caudal cruciate ligament sitting to the left of the punch or the meniscofemoral ligament of the lateral meniscus. The particles of ligament that are detached by the punch will be collected during the debridement and shaving process. The origin of the cranial cruciate ligament can now be seen on the notch wall. Debridement of this ligament is nearly complete. As part of this process, access to the caudal joint compartment has been established. If visualization of the caudal compartment is desired, placement of the scope through the notch into this area is possible. The ligament of the lateral meniscus is apparent in the center of our field. By moving between the caudal cruciate and this ligament, it is possible to drive into the joint compartment. The subsurface of the medial fabella is apparent. This area articulates with the caudal aspect of the femoral condyle apparent to the far left of our screen. Palpation of this area superficially will allow us to mobilize the fabella 
and determine that this is our structure. The synovium of the caudal compartment can be seen on the inner surface of the joint capsule. By retracting out from this space gently, by use of the light post and control of the scope, it is now possible to move past the lateral meniscal ligament and then insert into the lateral compartment. In this location, and by use of the post, we can now visualize the lateral fabella surface here. Use of the post and the 30 degree offset is crucial to allow us to perform this process. The lateral fabella can be seen in the caudal compartment of the joint. Then moving back out of the notch, the caudal cruciate can be assessed. The insertion of the caudal cruciate on the tibia can be evaluated. The origin of the, of the caudal cruciate in the femoral notch can also be assessed at this point.